All right, guys, so today we're going to continue on heaven part three, and today we're talking about eternal bodies, eternal bodies, all right? So if you had to decide what you would look like forever, Myself. what would it be? Jesse would want to look like himself. <laughs> if you had to decide what you're going to look like forever, or what your body would be like, Holy water. <laughs> uh -huh. So if you were gonna if you were gonna decide what you would look like forever, your all your functions, maybe what would you keep that you have now? What would you change? Yeah, wouldn't we all? You know, uh, I'm sure, you know, like girls today, uh, you know, they, you look at magazines, they, I want to be like her, or, or you know, uh, maybe some want to be Kim Kardashian, maybe some want to be uh, Cardi B, or some want to be, uh, who's skinny? Those girls are kind of thick. Any skinny ones? Rihanna? If you oh, think yeah. they're Rihanna? thick. <laughs> No, I just mean compared to you know, <laughs> like the mo you know the, on the cover things they're all like uh -huh. real. Okay, never mind. Yeah, just mm -hmm. stop. All right, so who? What would you want to be like? What if you gave? What if you gave God the chance to decide? You know, right now we're in a fallen world. We're imperfect. There's things about us that are imperfect. You know, I have some skin. I have a skin disease. It's right here if you want to see it. Imperfect. I have this. This shouldn't be here. All right? In a perfection world, this would, my, this would be thick. This is thin. Right? There's things I would love to change. This probably should not be like this. All right? As far as the hair, I think that's godly. I think full of hair all over that. Something about that is godly. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> but what would we do? And you know what? In reality, you don't have any you don't have any say over what you're gonna look like, what your body's gonna be. Because when you die, you're resurrected, everything changes, and you know who decides? God. He decides what you're gonna be, what you're gonna look like for the rest of eternity. Alright? But he's also the same one who formed you in your womb and made you look the way you do right now. Um, but you know, of course we're in a fallen world, so there's things messed up with us, you know. Uh, I have a cousin, and she has a back problem. That's because we're in a fallen world. I've got, I've had knee problems. I've had all oh, other stuff. Some of us are all twisted, walk funny, you know, there's different <laughs> things. <laughs> I'm uh, not talking about anybody in the room, but you know, we, there's things about us that, when we're resurrected, maybe God will fix. I don't know. So, I, I'm, I'm only saying that because we're going to look at some scriptures and you guys are going to decide. So, today we're going to talk about eternal bodies. Last week we talked about uh, when you die, you go to the grave, but that's not the final destination. We rise. And why, how do you know we're going to rise? Anybody? How do you know that we're going to rise from the dead? What proof do you have? Jesus. Jesus. And that's it. I was thinking about it. I was like... Who the heck else rose from the dead? There, you know, if we were going to bet our lives on this, I would look at examples. Okay, well, this this has clearly happened a few times in the past. You know, I check out the Yelp reviews. You know, what is resurrection? Here? Or just you know something you'd look at previous research a little bit, but nobody, Jesus alone, and that's why we believe it because he actually walked around. People actually saw him, and we're going to look at these verses today that that the hope we have in eternal life is because of what he did. So, let's start it. Heaven, eternal bodies. Here's some questions. Uh, <clears throat> no, those are not the questions. There it is. What will our resurrected bodies look like? Here's some questions you may want to consider. Will we still have our own identity? All right. Obviously, Josh and I are different people. Will we still be different? Are we all going to be robots? Are we all going to be the same like in Star Wars? You know, I have all those... Oh. Will we have gender? Okay, will Eileen still be a girl? Or will she be a, a woman? Will she be a whatever? You know, like I'm not, we're not anything. We're just people. I don't know, okay? 
Will we eat food? Pancakes. Will I be fat or skinny? You can still be fat. You can choose? I don't know. I think you could go to the gym once and then daily basis for eternity. (laughs) Will I be young or will I be old? When you die and you're 90, are you going to be like that for eternity? Uh, Will I still have sickness or disease? All right. Will I carry my. Skin disease into eternity. Will I be able to fly? Will those with disabilities still have them? Say somebody lost their leg in the war. They go in, you know, no leg. Will I be naked forever, like Adam and Eve? Just everybody's walking around. Hey, what's up, bro? You know, <laughs> naked. Some things to think about. And we're going to try to answer some of them. The others are just, you know, you have to make sense of that alone. What will eternal bodies be like, all right? Let's start reading some verses. Anybody need a Bible? Okay, thank you. Here you go. You would like one? There you go. You guys need one in the back there? There you go. Ah, There you go. You guys can share it. Thank you. All right, so we're going to look at some verses today, and then we're going to talk about it. All right? I have them all up here, but you can read it in a different version if you like. So... The first one is that uh, the Bible does talk about this, but it's not all clear. And this is the verse, 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. Sure. All right, so right off the bat, in 1 John, He's telling us, We're God's children now, and what we are going to be like is not revealed, all right? It's not appeared. It's not fully revealed. We got some hints, but we know that when He appears, who's Jesus, we know this, we're going to be like Him, okay? So that's that's pretty much all we're given. We know that when He appears, we're going to be like Him, because he He was the first resurrected person, and... He has that eternal body. Okay, we're going to get into this, but when Christ appears, we're going to be like Him and much more. You know, there's more things we don't know about. All right, so let's get into um, Jesus. All right, so there's examples of Jesus in the Bible after He rose. What was He like? If what He was like is what we're going to be like, what was He like? So let's look at it. Luke 24, 36 and if somebody could see this, if they could read it, or if you have it in your verse, if you wouldn't mind helping us out, a different version. Irene, would you like to help us, please? Oh. <clears throat> or, it, as she's looking, somebody else can do it. She can do another one, if somebody has it. 24, 36 through 43. Any takers? As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they had seen a spirit. He said to them, Why are you troubled and why do you doubt? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see that I have. Yeah, yeah, all the way to And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they still dis- while mm, and while they still disbelieved for the for joy and were marveling, he said to them, "Have you anything here to eat?" Jeez, mm. <clears throat> they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took he took it and ate it before them. Okay. All right, so. If the verse that we read in 1 John is true and it says what what he is like is what we're going to be like, let's just get an idea of what, after he rose, what was he like. Um, I have some questions that I've been thinking about, but let's go through it. What is the verse saying? All right, so if you guys throw out to me some things you see about him that that we notice about a resurrected person. What is what is some characteristic? As they were talking about these things, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. 
Anything in the first verse that sticks out. I, I underline some things, but they may not be all that's there. <clears throat> first verse. Um, when he's making the reference in verse 39, to see my hands and feet, um, if you read John 20, and he appears himself to Thomas, and Thomas is basically saying, like, unless I see his hands with nails, um, I'm not going to believe. And then right. he, um, he tells him, Reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put right. it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. So he had the nails. He had... Yeah, that was the one that got me. That on his hands and his feet. That scared me. And so... I'm still going to have my skin disease. No, go ahead. <laughs> and so it does make you wonder, like, is it just because he's revealing himself to him and because that was the last state that they saw him in? Like, they didn't really believe, like, he really died? Or does that really mean that when we... Yeah. That we'll have, like, we'll have, like, if you die in a car accident, like, you're gonna have the half your face is off, you're yeah. going to go into heaven. Right, right. Okay. This is a good, good question. Good question. Uh, and I don't know that there's really, a, you know, a solid... answer that you know that that the bible talks about for that maybe jesus intentionally did that so they would know because he knew they were going to doubt so i'm going to keep the holes so they can see that it's really me I, and then he goes into the blessing that because you have seen me well he says you believe the blessed are those who have not seen me yet believe right okay uh so let's let's talk about these eternal bodies at least some things that we know all right, I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give you the first one. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. All right, so they were all hanging out, talking, and then boom, Jesus shows up. Uh, there's another verse, the one Monty read in uh, with Thomas, that they were in a room and Jesus appeared. So it looks like he's got a normal body, but he just like walked through a wall or something. He just, you know, just popped out of nowhere. With this body. So, that's something to think about. Okay, will we be like that? I don't know. I don't know. But, he was. Okay, he could do that. But they startled and frightened a thought. They saw a spirit and he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Uh, they thought he was this ghost. Because he just uh, popped out. You know, he just uh, appeared. See my, and he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your heart? See my hands and my feet. <clears throat> All right. What do you think that it is myself means? Come on in. That it is myself. Morning. I think he's making <clears throat> a reference to on the road to Emmaus, something because on that road he is walking along. With um, Peter and some of James. No, it was like a disciple and then like Caiaphas or something. Oh, wow. um, but he wasn't, they couldn't recognize him. They uh -huh. with him. Right. They walked with him the entire way and he didn't, they didn't know himself. that they were walking with right. him. Right. So, and then when he broke bed, he revealed himself and then he disappeared. Um, <clears throat> but on this one, it's like, I. He's saying that I have come to you as myself. Right. So I, I, what I was thinking from this is that he's saying it's it's going to be you. You know, when you rise from the dead, it's still going to be you. You know, you're not going to be this other something else. You know, Steve is going to be Steve. You know, there's there's components of your... there. I was reading a bunch of stuff and it's believed that, you know... Like we have DNA, we're all different. Every fingerprint is unique. That even in the resurrection, everybody's different. We still have uniqueness. Um, mine's a little messed up. I had a, a wart on there that cut it out, so my fingerprint's a little tore up. But um, everybody's unique, and you're going to carry that. And and what if what if part of your DNA has that in you? You know, your resurrected self. I don't know. You know, those are some questions. Touch me and see, all right? He's not a ghost because you can actually touch him. You know, there's physicality to him. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones. Okay, Jesus had flesh and bones in the resurrected form. So 
Maybe we'll have that. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, and while they were still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? All right, good news. You can eat. All right, we're, so what we're filling you in, we're talking about heaven. When you are resurrected, you go to heaven, what will you be like? And we're learning that you're going you're gonna to have a body. You're going to be hungry, obviously. You're going to you know, want to eat because that's how Jesus was when he was resurrected. Uh, the big question is, will there be meat? Right. I don't think so because, you know, every, there's going to be peace, no, no more death, no more pain. Will we still be killing cows? Uh, I really don't think so. So, I mean, get all your hamburgers you can right now. You know, if you just in and out daily, I don't blame you. But, uh, again, I, I, that's just my opinion. Because in the beginning, it, it, you didn't eat meat. In the garden, you, there, you didn't kill animals. You know, no, there was, they didn't eat meat. They gave him a piece of boiled fish and he took it and he ate before them. Okay? A little glimpse of the resurrected body, what they're going to be like. Okay? Anybody else see something we're missing? Questions about this? I like how 37 points out that they were startled and frightened. And that they, th they thought that they seen the spirit. I like that part. Yeah. Because um, they, they, he looks like a spirit. Yeah. Well, he, not only did he just appear out of nowhere... Yeah, maybe he looked a little different. You know, they they didn't. I don't think it's that he looked like a spirit. I think it's that they knew he was dead. Right. I mean, so like, does anybody else have that moment? Like when the prince was like, I think Marilyn and I when we went to our grandma's funeral, like a couple, like a day later or something. I remember like going into my grandma's room and like I opened the room and I, like I could have sworn <clears throat> on my life that my grandma was sitting on the mm. edge of the bed. And it scared me so much, like I couldn't sleep, and I like, I had told my mom, and then I, Marilyn had it like the next day, and it's just like, I mean, I knew she was, you know, it wasn't her, but it's just like, you really think it's, it frightens you, and that's like the only experience I've ever had with like, anything up here or anything like that, that's but. Like, so it's scary because you know they're dead. I just saw you buried. How the heck are you here? You know, you, you gotta be a ghost. Makes sense. So okay. not necessarily that he looked like, yeah. like a ghost. He wasn't transparent. It's more that that's what they thought that he was. <clears throat> right. So he was still a man. He was still, you know, he wasn't this genderless person. He was still a man. He was still Jesus. Um, racial identities, all right? Are you still going to be Mexican? Yeah. Or is everybody going to be white? Why would I don't know. Racist? Yeah, well, you know, the Germans believe that at uh -huh. least. That everybody was, that was a dominant race. <laughs> All right, will we be? That's what they believe. I'm not saying that's true, okay? <laughs> we, yeah. Will I still be Mexican or will we all be white, okay? That's the question. Revelation 7, 9. After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed and white robes with palm branches in their hands, all right? So, will you still maintain identity, racial identity? And it seems so. It says that every nation from all tribes, peoples, and languages, all right? Different languages. We got, you know, everything that's German, Russian, Italian, uh, Korean. Mexican, Korean, Chinese. Everything will, everyone will be there all peoples and all tribes, okay? Um, so all cultures, we could say. There's going to be everything. So will you maintain your racial identity? It seems so. There's going to be distinction. We're not all going to be the same, which is awesome. You know, that's how you were made to be. So we're going to keep that, all right? This part, uh, will we be naked forever? Well, obviously here it says white robes. Uh, there was another verses that talk about the angels have gold, uh, something on them, but um, that's the only part where it mentions robes. It doesn't say they're going to be dressed in jeans, we're in Levi's, uh, we're in, you know, uh, it doesn't say anything. So we don't know. 
robes. You know, we're going to, maybe we'll lose all fashion. No more, uh, what do you wear? Uh, what's something expensive? Gucci or? True religion. True religion. You know, no, maybe no more of that. I don't know. And we're all going to just go back to the old fashioned robes, you know? I don't know. But the point is, nakedness, you'll be clothed in robes, okay? Whether you can take them off at any time, I don't know. Hope not. But, but I'm telling you what, we're not going to be ashamed. We're all going to be perfect. You will not be ashamed, okay? Some of you aren't ashamed now, but... New bodies, okay? So... <laughs> Did I misspell that? No. We're just laughing at you. Well, okay. Well, I'm, ex I'm uh, decently happy with mine, okay? That's your wondering. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15. This is the biggest one. I did not know this existed in the Bible until I read it. Okay, what? I did. Hmm? What? 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 I don't know. Sir. I said I didn't know. I didn't know this chat, this set of verses existed in the Bible. Um, all you know how the, where it goes into detail about the resurrected bodies. So we're gonna read it, and we're gonna we're gonna get some info from this. Uh, I've I've just read through it, and I've missed it so many times. Uh, but now that we're actually on the topic, I'm. Been, this one's huge. If you want to learn about resurrection, read First Corinthians 15, the whole chapter. Okay, I don't know. All right, so let's read it. What will the new resurrected bodies be? And maybe some of you are like, I don't even care. I just want to get there. More power to you. Awesome. For some reason, the Bible gives us a description, so let's see why. All right, I'm going to read the first one. Somebody else is going to jump in. And let's pull... Huh? But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you saw does not come to life until it dies. And what you saw is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of a seed its own body. Alright, so we're talking about seeds. He's saying, what kind of body do they come, the resurrected? He says, uh, don't you know that... Things have to die in order to rise, like the, the grain, a kernel of seed has to die, and then it turns into a new plant, it goes in the ground dead. Um, and it's a, what you saw is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain, all right? So the, the old one, that, the one that had to die is the old one. It's not the new one that's going to be. But God gives it a body as he chose, 38, and to each kind of a seed its own body. 39. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. Different types of flesh. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly one is of one kind and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, there's another of the moon, there's another glory of the stars for different stars differ from stars in their glory. Okay, so a lot of stuff here, but this is first talking about things have to die to rise. We there's different types of flesh. You know, this is a little bit of biology for some of you guys who do biology. Flat uh, birds, fish, people, different type there are different makeups of our flesh. Um, and that's what he's saying is that when you talk about humans and resurrected bodies, those are different too. Different makeups. Um, <clears throat> there's a glory to them. That was kind of cool that there's a glory to these earthly and there's a glory to the heavenly. All right. And I read some, some you know, somebody thinking about this. They said, you know, when Moses went up to the mountain to talk to God, he came down glowing. So they were saying, well, are we going to be glowing because we're in God's presence forever? I don't know. Maybe. Will we be like... Uh, well, that was his earthly body before the presence of God. It wasn't his uh, celestial body. True. What's that vampire guy uh, from... Uh, Robert. Robert. Damon. Damon. <laughs> was Edward. 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 You know how Edward shines in the light? 
<laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm going by the name. Oh, uh, that's his real name. All right. So, glory. Will it, you know, will you have a glory? Um, it, there is definitely a glory to the resurrected body. All right. So that's the first part. You have to die, and then when you rise, you're something new. Continued. Uh, I need some help. Anybody? Jesse, do you mind helping? So also at the resurrection of the dead, the body is sown in corruption and is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor and is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and it is raised in power. It is sown in the natural body, it is raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body and then there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last man Adam became a living giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord of heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are there who are heavenly. And as we are born the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Okay. That's it. All right, so... It's doing some comparisons to the natural body and the resurrected body. What comparisons do you guys see? Uh, say it again. <clears throat> but that, <clears throat> so Jesus raised, was raised in flesh. Yes. The flesh, like our flesh. And our flesh is dust. Yeah. But it was in the flesh. It, it was, was the flesh. spirit within the flesh that rose. <clears throat> But the but the flesh went up to heaven. Um, That's what the Bible says. So are you talking about thirty five? The first man became a life giving. Uh, the, there it is, forty seven. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. Second man. As a man of heaven. Uh, 48, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of the dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Is that what you're... No. Because it sounds like there's a difference. You know, like There is, Adam... but I'm wondering if that difference is applied to us, but not to Jesus. Because Jesus was raised because in the flesh. Both. Well, is right. human is that flesh human? resurrected flesh? It is, obviously. Yeah, is that what it's going to be like? Maybe. Are we in a resurrected flesh? Right. Well, it's it's all these things I've been talking about. You know, there's different types of flesh. There's a heavenly flesh or heavenly body. And there's a spiritual body. I don't know if it's a flesh or body, but it sounds like there is a type of flesh, you know, but it's different. Yeah. Well, I mean, from the beginning when Adam and Eve were created, before sin happened, they weren't going to know death. They weren't going to know pain. I mean, it wasn't nothing like the body that came afterwards. It was until after they sinned that then the body got, you know, was... Cursed with pain, cursed with sickness, it started to deteriorate. They weren't, they were meant to be immortal. And sin happened. But I mean, their substance is still the same, but it's different. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. Yep. So I, 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 I'll give you what I think, and then, you know, you, again, you guys can, but is it does seem like that we will have fleshly bodies, but it's different. It's different type and I don't really know how to explain what it would be like but you know something that can eat processed food you know hopefully it doesn't get fat as easy um, so that's what it seems like so I, I think you're saying that there you're having some well there's some confusion there and hey I rightly so you know it's it is it's hard to kind of understand that are you saying that maybe it was just Jesus that had to for mm -hmm. the sake I'm of that everybody maybe believing? We just, because Jesus held his scars still. Right. So it was in the same body that he was in before. 
required. So you're saying there's a new body. And that is, when the, new, that is the body that he took to heaven. Right. Well, the body that he died in had the scars. Right. But that is the body that he took to heaven. Mm-hmm. Which is the one that he revealed himself with. <clears throat> okay. Continue. Yeah. No, that's it. Yeah, let's continue. Um, so, anything else? Eileen, did you notice anything else about this? That The comparisons? Carla said that the dust stood out to her. Yeah, we're, we were made of dust, but not anymore. Nothing? Well, anybody else? <clears throat> Something stick out to you? Steve, anything you like? No, I'm still trying to uh, comprehend what she's trying to yeah. say. What I'm okay. trying to say? Yeah. I'm sorry. She's going to have a separate class on her own. No, no. Said, uh, what do you think? If Jesus rose and he still had the scars right. and went up with that body, right. would that mean that if we rose again, would we also be up there with our sin body? Right. Because if we're going to wear robes, there has to be a certain body. That oh, yeah. Can we're definitely going to have a body. Definitely going to have a but body. Would it be the same one? Well, you're going to you're going to still be you. Yeah. You know, you're still going to have your identity. You're going to look like you, but perfected. You know, and, and why Jesus still had the scars? Personally, I think it was choice. Personally. Um, I, you know, but I don't know. You know, I mean, he may even have those in heaven. I don't know. Do you think maybe it was for the sake of his disciples? So that That's they would believe that it was a ghost, that he was the Messiah, that like that is the last <clears throat> image they had of him. And it doesn't so it was say. That they could recognize <coughs> and definitely like. Yeah. Because it's not like he was like, oh, well, I'm just, you know, there was a purpose right. behind it. It couldn't have just But then like not that. only that, but he could also, like, morph. If we're, to, like, talking literally. Like, right. after the resurrection, he morphed into somebody that wasn't him. Hmm. When he appeared on the road. That was after the resurrection. Yeah. Well, I think he has the power to do that. Do we? Uh, Will we? No, we don't. No. Oh, Will. What? How will? Oh, but, like, because when there. Jesus yeah. went on the mountain with his uh, with his couple of disciples, he I think it was necessary his, to reveal and body. unreveal right. himself to certain people the way that he did. But because we will be before his presence, he there's no reason for him to hide himself from us <laughs> because we will already be in his presence. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me give you a few things that stood out to me that you missed, Eileen. Here's a few things that are pretty cool. Uh, what is sown perishable raised imperishable? What does imperishable mean? Can't die. die. Cannot die, all right? So these bodies like uh, Karime, as beautiful as she is, gonna die. She's not, she's not immortal. She can die, all right? But when you die and you come back, you'll never die. Imperishable. That's what the body will be like. You know, it'll be like get poked. Yeah, I don't know exactly, but you, know, you see movies of Superman where he gets shot and it's like, what? Do it, bro. And you're just shooting him and nothing. I don't know if that's exactly how it's going to be like, but you, you, you won't die. Um, it's sown in weakness and it's raised in power, right? These bodies are weak and fragile and were raised in power, incorruptible, perfected. Uh, if there is a natural body, there's also a spiritual body, all right? We also bear the image of the man of heaven. All right, we will be like him. Uh, last, I think I got two more, and then we're out. Uh, I'll, I'll help you with this one. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot enter, nor does the perishable inherit imperishable. Things that die will not be in heaven. Behold, I tell you, or in the new kingdom, I tell you a mystery. We shall not, okay, this part's like a side note. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. All right. So he's saying that what's crazy is that when he comes, there's going to be some people who are going to change like that. You know, when you die 
and you come back resurrected, some people are just going to, while they're alive, change. And into what, you know, again, that's things that we're trying to figure out. But the point is the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. And every person is going to go through this transformation into this eternal body. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? You guys have heard lots of songs about that. You know, and that's what it's talking about, is when you rise from the dead, you're going to say, where are you at, fool? You know, to death, you can't touch me anymore. Grave, where is your, death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? Um, and you can sing about it now because we know for certain that that's going to occur. The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the last part. I'm going to move on to this last, this last note is what some things we learned what is not in heaven and what is in heaven just from what we looked at maybe in the last few weeks and we're going to continue on what do you guys think is not going to be in heaven animals okay that's a lie what do you think no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, what do you think's not going to be there uh, money no suffering no pain no suffering no families? No disease, no war. You don't read no it, bro. Sorrow, no hate, no I just put those that. examples. What do you guys think there's not going to be any more of? You think you're still going to have church like this? Every day? It'll be daily. Yeah, there's going to be no. It's not going to be anything like our church. It won't, there's no temples, there's no need. I mean, God's going to be right there. You don't have to talk about Him, He's right there, you know. It's going to be totally different. Well, we can pray Do you them. think it's spatial then? What is this? Spatial? Like, is it infinite? Like, is heaven an infinite <clears throat> space? Oh, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that next week. <laughs> next week. Wow. <laughs> All right, there's no more kidnappings, all right? You guys read about this. You will not see any sign saying girl lost. Nope. No more kidnappings. No more rape. No more death. No more lame. No sin. No baldness. No insecurities, all right? And people have insecurities about themselves, about anything, finances, none of that, all right? No broken hearts. Okay, pain, we carry relationships, never again. Um, no fatherless, there's no homeless in, in heaven, no homeless, nothing. Everybody is completely taken care of. No pollution, no churches, no greed, no boredom, no college. Actually, I just put that in there, I don't know, maybe. Maybe there's some intellectual, I don't know. But you won't be bored either. And that's a lot of people think, I'm going to be heaven playing my harp all forever, you know. No. <laughs> Next week we're going to talk about what heaven's like and what are we going to do. That's what we're going to touch on. But what is going to be there? Complete joy, complete fulfillment and satisfaction. Everything we're looking for here that we cannot find. You'll be fully loved. You'll be healed and whole, perfected. For, you'll have purpose. You'll have ingen ingenuity to the highest degree. Enough. Of everything we need. You know, it's going to be Much. more than you can ever comprehend. If you are going to decide what you're going to look like, you know, you might bodybuild or whatever, but again, God is going to decide and He's going to, with all the love He can, he, that He has for you, He's going to give you this eternal person. And again, so we really isn't, to me, and maybe to us, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'm just happy I get to go. You know, as long as I'm not a squirrel, fine, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but you're going to be you. You're going to have yourself. You're going to be in heaven, perfected, immortal. And we look forward to that because right now I have to, I have to deal with some of these things. I got a skin disease. Look. Okay. See that? You got, I got some of these. You know, I hate it. The itch. Oh, you know.
What is your skin disease called? Um, it's called psoriasis. leprosy. It's not leprosy, <laughs> it's psoriasis. Psoriasis? Yep, and I have other problems. My shoulder hurts, you know, my back sometimes. But, you know, Paul was saying that he goes through so much. He's saying, if there's no resurrection, this is all worthless. The reason why I go through this for Christ is because I know there's an eternity beyond. And uh, so let's have that hope too. Next week we're going to continue. So let's pray and we're going to shut down.